Nerd! All right, guys, so enough housekeeping. Let's talk about everything wrong with Star Trek with Strange New Worlds, the musical. So mm. it, 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 it dropped this week that basically uh, Star Trek, Strange New Worlds, went full Joss Whedon and decided to do a, uh, a musical episode where the crew of the Enterprise basically does some timey-wimey science stuff and gets uh, basically cursed by a subspace mm. signal that makes them break out into song and dance musical style. And th there was even a cap at the end there where the Klingons decide to go full boy band, singing their feelings. Vader, yeah. you had to explain this episode to me because I refused to watch it. Yeah, and um, I didn't do a very good job of it because it's yeah. Can you break it do. down for the? Uh, no, probably not. There? It's like you just said. Uh, uh, Uhura and Spock were doing some uh, space mumbo jumbo and um, trying to like fix some uh, communication so they could talk across the galaxy in real time. You know, they're trying to put their Zoom stuff together, and um, they Uhura, Uhura put a song in it and it did some space blabble stuff and the ship got hit with a a temporal vortex or some stupid star trek shit and um spock started getting sad and singing and i mean and then everybody started singing and dancing yeah and um that's it that's it and then um uh the the, the really great boy band uh you know the, the klingon in sync version came along and sang for 30 seconds and we all went click said never again i'm done i'm out <laughs> so yeah that was it man it was awful it was awful, awful. right awful. but, but awful. before <laughs> before we before we get into just how awful this is i forgot to call out the chat and uh, we're, all of you guys who dropped super chats already we thank you so much for that we're going to get to those after the star trek musical segment yep. but real quick anthony mark the astro nerd boy def row tv danny's mom penny gavin blackburn mr super sticker extraordinaire sean stackhouse cocho dragon uh, who else do we got here? Mighty Orbots, good to see you. The Political Nerd, Joker's Voice, uh, Anima Confusa, Trivia Champion. I uh, haven't seen her in a while. Um, who else do we got here? We got Jeremy Turner and uh, Mexican Iron Man, good to see you, Mike. I uh, invited Mike to my wedding, actually. Nice. So, yeah, we have a Salt Dog Zero over in Rumble chat, chatting with me a little bit. And there's oh, nice. some other people there, but they're not chatting. But yeah, we do have a Rumble presence. Um, sub over there for us too, guys, if you can. We got uh, Gary Banjo Sandwich Worthington and Father yes. Miller, Scotty Dub, um, Jeremy Turner. I think I said Jeremy's name already. All right. So, uh, guys, thank you all so much for being here at the start of the stream. Really looking forward to uh, getting to the super chats. But before we do, Brian, unleash yeah. hell on this episode. <laughs> oh, my God. There is so many problems with this episode. It's funny because over the last couple of weeks, you guys keep mentioning how Shane is slowly becoming blackpilled every week mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, wa watching his, uh, his his brain melt down after this episode was just absolutely astonishing. Uh, <laughs> you're going to love this upcoming finale. I watched I got to watch it already because the screeners and uh, oh, my God, it is uh, it is it is so bad um there's just i can't wait to see shane like if shane's reaction to this musical wasn't phenomenal you i can't you do not miss his reaction to this <laughs> finale it is gonna it's gonna melt the the effing camera oh my god i'm watching this thing and i got about 70 percent through and i i just can't finish it because i hate the singing is atrocious the music is bad it makes no scientific sense whatsoever in a fold of subspace. I don't even know what the F that means. Yeah. What is that, a wormhole? What are you talking about? Yeah. Why does it affect everything? It's Why unzipped. It, all... it unzipped. Yeah, it's, it's unzipped. It's a, <laughs> they unzipped the panties of the universe, and the Federation is being affected by this musical virus. It doesn't make any scientific sense. They unzip panties? Pan <laughs> Kind of whatever, so yeah. whatever. They just, they just, they <laughs> took off. They took the the German outer panties. layer of the universe off somehow. Nothing makes sense because what happens is they have an idea for a musical and they go, they they, they not, they're not writing the episode as a Star Trek episode. They're saying I want to do this, and then they're reverse engineering that to make it Star Trek uh, themed. So this is a Star Trek themed musical. This is a Star Trek theme. Every episode is a Star Trek themed whatever we want to do, 
And we're, if we put enough uh, Star Trek mumbo jumbo and things that sound technical, then, you know, the audience will buy it. But none of it makes any sense. At one point they go, well, we, we realize we can't uh, uh, fire anything at these subspace particles because we damaged a little bit of it and it was catastrophic. So if we actually fire on the on the subspace fold, that's going to blow up the universe. Yeah, it'd be like a Kelpian in the middle of a, of a <laughs> right. dilithium yeah. asteroid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, immediately, immediately the Klingons call and they're like, we figured out the problem. We're going to fire on the subspace fold. And they're like, no, don't do that. Well, now you have like this big universe problem though, because like this subspace fold is like a naturally occurring event. They didn't permanently solve the problem, which means that it can pop up at any moment. What if they're not there when some race of uh, gun happy, uh, gun toting, gun happy, you know, what, aliens what decide if, to fire on it and just blow up the entire universe again. What if the Pac-Leds had found it? Oh, right. my God. Okay. Or the Kazon. Or the, or the Nausicans, maybe. Yeah. Or, you know, know, yeah. All, like, the, all the mentally challenged races that just fire on everything immediately. <laughs> like, what happens if they, like, the whole universe can go up in, in smoke at any moment, depending on who finds the naturally occurring subspace fold and then gets infected by a musical virus. This crack in space, not smart. Me shoot. <laughs> me don't like this crack in me space. Like, me hate. Me hate yeah. singing. All right, there's yeah. more, more problems there. I'm not even sure how some of these races <laughs> even get the ability to travel in space in the first place. But there's just it, it, uh, there's so many questions and answers. And that's what Star Trek is nowadays. Me. They don't actually care about answering the question canonically going forward all they care about is that one episode and they, they're not they don't have to worry about what happened before or what's going to happen after so we want to make a musical let's just wrap a musical and there's a bun bunch of ways to do this but if you want to make a musical you could have actually made a now i don't appreciate a musical um i'm sure people like them i i don't i don't care for them but if you really wanted to make a star trek musical there's a million ways you could have done this and not had this really stupid idea to wrap it around but that's not Star Trek nowadays. They don't really yeah. care about the, the vehicle. All they care about is the message. Yeah, you know, what's funny, Brian, is, you know, like, we've known you and Shane for a long time. And Shane has always been very kind of like apologetic. I shouldn't say apologetic. Accepting of new Trek. Like, yeah. like he was very, very kind positive. of optimistic about it and positive. And he's, he's like, I just want to stay positive about it. I had a talk with him yesterday when I was at the convention. And he was like, Star Trek's dead. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's dead. Speaking oh, of, that's uh, sad. Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's been watching it for like 40 years, too. Yeah. This has been like his primary, like, like his favorite thing. So that, he's seen every single iteration of the show. Every iteration of Star Trek ever that's multiple like times. I, he, he, I he adores it. Like, he, he, I love Star Trek, but I love other things more than Star me, Trek. Shane you know? and I are the same. And to me, I've said this before, it's it's a very sad thing to me that I have basically zero interest in all of my IPs that have the word star in front of them right now. And it sucks. I'm really upset about it. But, and in know. order to turn Shane, it's got to be a slow thing because Shane doesn't just he's not reactionary. You know, he'll give mm -hmm. something the benefit of the doubt for a long time. So it's, it's a slow, a dripping, a de dripping death. <laughs> Uh, so, Nina, other than dead naming X, uh, which was formerly known as Twitter, um, tell us why you decided that Star Trek is just not worth your time anymore. Um, well, I, for those of you who don't know, I'm a massive Star Trek fan. I've uh, I've watched Star Trek from since I was young. I, I was introduced to it, um, it by my husband, but who was my boyfriend at the time, because uh, he was a Star Trek nerd. And I actually hated Star Trek at the time because I was a girl and I was like, oh, my God, you're such a nerd. Um, but then I got introduced to it and I really loved it. And my favorite series is uh, DS9. And uh, I've always loved, um, I mean, TNG is a close second, but DS9 is my favorite one. Um, and I've just had a really a great relationship with Star Trek for a long time. It's taught me a lot of things. And um, after JJ Trek came out, like, I mean, the first movie uh, my husband and I really kind of like made fun of it because we were like, oh, my God, like it's it's like Star Wars. Like it's they've made it into Star Wars, basically, so that they can't attract this new audience. And we just kind of weren't feeling it, even though the first one wasn't actually like all that bad. Like we actually liked the casting. We thought the casting was great and it was good. 
but it was just like very different and it just felt very different. But then his sister, who's like a huge, like totally different, like normie, he, she's like a normie and she hated Star Trek all her life. She was like, oh, I really liked it. Like the Star Trek is so great and blah, blah, blah. And then we were like, oh, no. So it just it we realized like what kind of people was trying to get, you know, in, in like attract. And we're like, this is not heading towards the right place. And it didn't. So it started just kind of going downhill from there. And I I never really liked JJ Trek, the universe that he created. I didn't like the dark and gritty. I didn't like, I liked Star Trek being bright. And even though like they had done DS9 and it was dark and gritty, but D, like DS9 still had a lot of ideas that were based on the values of Star Trek, which is um, how humans have figured it out, but they're trying to uh, interact with other alien species who may not have necessarily figured it out. Um, so it's just, it's it, it was done well with competent writers, whereas in it started just kind of going downhill. And at the and at some point, I just, I stopped because, well, I watched Discovery. So <laughs> I've, oh, I've, I'm sorry. I know. <laughs> so what happened was like, I remember after a while, because I kind of like I checked out after the third movie, I was like, oh, this sucks. And then um, I didn't see anything Star Trek for a long time until I kept hearing about Discovery. Discovery is coming on. Discovery is coming on. I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to give this a shot because I love Star Trek. I, let's see what it's like. And I kind of like hung in there for a few episodes and I was like, OK, this is OK. I don't know where this is going, but OK. And then. And there was Klingon grape and there was like all these like different things that Klingons didn't look like Klingons. It was just a mess. Um, and then I just after the first season, I I stuck it out to the first season. And I was like, I'm done. Like I was like, oh, oh my God, like Star Trek's dead. And then I never watched Picard season one and two because I watched a lot of reviews. Um, and uh, Gary especially was like, this is terrible. Gary from Nerdrotic. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to watch this because I just, I can't do this to myself because Picard was one of my favorite characters of all time. So I was like, I don't want to watch him die like the way Luke Skywalker died for me. I don't want to see that. So I didn't watch it. But then season three came out and everybody kind of changed their tune. So I was like, okay, let's, let's see what this is. Because at the end of the day, I feel like everybody kind of has to make up their own mind. And I didn't hate season three even though I still didn't like it. <laughs> like I thought it was dark and JJ universe. And I was like, eh, it's all right. But it wasn't complete and utter shit. So excuse my language. I don't know if it's where here, but you do. Um, but it wasn't utter crap. So I was like, okay, this is fine. And it gave a fitting ending to the cast and that deserved it. And I like the fact that we finally got the whole crew together. But that is the long way of saying that my apathy towards Star Trek has just completely like, overshadowed any love that I had for uh, I mean meaning like the love still remains I mean I still rewatch DS9 all the time I, I watch Voyager I watch I rewatch all the good ones um I just I my love is just there and I don't watch any of the new ones so after Picard when I, I knew that this new one was running um but I didn't I obviously I was like I had no interest and I just kind of see like the clips getting posted here and there and I'm like Oh my God, like, what are they doing? And to Brian's point, I think the people that wrote the episode that did for this musical, they're probably a bunch of like, you know, I don't know, people who grew up with Glee and they were like, let's put Glee in this series and like, let's make it all Star Trek Glee and like, blah, blah, blah. And so they did it. And I think you're right, Brian, like you could do a right. musical in so many different ways that wouldn't be like that. Like you can honor because musicals can be really fun. Um, yeah, it, just, it could be, it just, yeah, you, and you can actually you wrap it. it into, in a real Star Trek episode. You don't, you don't reverse engineer the musical and go, exactly. I want to do a musical. Let's start from there and go backwards. Like make it a Star Trek episode where there's actually like some science behind it, some kind of stakes and then, exactly. you know, then go forward. Yeah. And then, yeah, but, so, but also like the I mean, choice of music too. Cause you see like, Klingons going into like auto tune. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that was like. That was lost awesome. opportunity. Like, or... They're all into like Klingons are into opera. Why don't yeah. they do some opera? Or exactly like, like, some the heavy kind metal of or music something? they or chose is just weird in general. It's like like yeah. why would you choose this really very very specific and time sort of music? Like this mm -hmm. is a very twenty twenty two type like of a, music. 
It's like a Rodgers and Hammerstein Broadway musical kind of thing. I think OMB said that. And, you know, it's not like Star Trek fans aren't open to weirdness, right? We've had, mm -hmm. you know, we had a Robin Hood episode. I am not a merry man, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we've, we've had lots of holodeck adventures. Holodeck, had, yes. Uh, Three Musketeers. You know, it's, like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's stuff. You know, some of those some of those weird episodes are some of our favorites, you know, like yeah. uh the, the Lieutenant Barclay one where he's like infatuated with Troy and she's yeah. like on her swing and stuff. It's just I love that episode. It's like let's have some weirdness, but man, this is like full on um weird broad off Broadway musical stuff, and that's just not what Star Trek is well, supposed what was, to feel like to you, me so you, you know what was funny is is that yesterday at the convention the biggest debate going on amongst the people uh in the fans uh was like what they thought of the musical episode and there was a big divide between the people who didn't like it and the people who thought it was was a lot of fun hey guys if you could do me a quick favor if you like this episode and it tickles your fancy or any other episode that we've done in the past uh share it on social media and tag us in that post so that we know you're talking about us and we will immediately jump onto that app and we will respond to your tag and uh, we can talk about what you like about the episode and possibly talk about something that we might want to cover in the future and we would love to bring you in in our community we have a wonderful discord app as well there's a bunch of people in there that just love chatting with us and uh, we'd love to hear from you. So if you like this podcast, tag us in that post and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you guys so much. Back to the podcast. Uh, which uh, brings me to Odin. Odin, so when they announced that they were doing this musical episode on, on X, formerly known as Twitter, um, they, uh, I retweeted the official uh, kind of like promo of it. And everyone was just like, what the hell is this? And then once the episode came out, and people start clipping, like especially like the Klingon boy band uh, segment of, of the episode, um, the floodgates of just sheer hatred and and malice uh, kind of like opened and just got dumped all over this thing. What was your take on the reaction of this? Like, couldn't the people making Star Trek have known that this was inevitable? Yeah, I mean, because I, I mentioned this in the private chat, but I actually have a musical theater background. I did shows for like 20 years. I, I guess I even started a couple of musicals, in fact. And so I typically like musical episodes in shows. Some of the, the greatest episodes I can think of are classic shows like Buffy. The musical episode there is just phenomenal. But then even going back to my like to old school days, even Stevens, I don't know if anyone remembers even Stevens, but there was a musical episode of that one, too. And it was really fun. And I think the problem is, is that I don't even think it's necessarily the Glee generation kind of looking back and saying, how can we make this more like Glee? But I think it's people saying, well, you know, all the great shows have a musical episode at some point, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, okay. I don't know if, did, didn't Smallville have a musical episode as well? It wouldn't surprise me if they did. It wasn't like a full musical episode. But okay. There music. You know. Yeah, but there was music in it. But I think that ultimately it comes down to like what I think is definitely true is they are trying to take modern day music, which is just crap. And yeah. use those musical taste to put it into the show because what they could have done, I think this was something that all, all we are kind of hinting at and mentioning was they could have said, OK, what would have been the musical taste of the Klingons that would make sense to them? Opera would make a great because that would be part of the lore. And that yeah. would actually be something that fans, even if they're not musical fans, could laugh at and say, oh, wait, it's because they love opera. OK, you, you know, I can see the connection there. But well, instead, they decided to go in this like modern day pop rock crap. And uh, in much more of that direction of, yeah. of Glee, where it's like that's the kind of music and the styling of, of music that Glee would use for classical songs, too. And so, yeah, I think that it's just a it's a conglomerate. It's just like it's a combining of all these terrible ideas that have existed in in different shows done in the worst way possible. When, when they first showed the Klingons on the screen before they did the musical number, like earlier in the show, I was I immediately thought I'm like, all right, cool. We're going to get some weird Klingon opera thing. Yeah. Or we're gonna get some really yeah. cool uh, Klingon black metal, and yeah, it's gonna black metal. freaking rock. Yeah, see, that oh, would have been cool been too. Opera <laughs> into black metal, it would have been awesome. Yeah, that would have yes. been that would have been kind of cool too. Yeah, uh, I like this is this is the thing, right? Is the music choice is really important, and it's just it it's weird because I think we're all even trying to forget the fact that that type of music exists. I mean, at least I am because I don't listen to that kind of music anymore. Like I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh my god, because it like just really fly, fries your brain. So I think maybe it's the musical choice, especially for nerds. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, no offense, nerds, but most nerds aren't listening to like top 40 weird, like Cardi B, like WAP. Mm -hmm. People aren't listening to that kind of music in that, in that 
sphere. So it's like, yeah, go find something better. Go find something that people can relate to. The funny part is that most Star Trek fans have a lot of like a great sense of humor. Like, for example, I'm not sure if you guys watch Flashcast, but um, in Flashcast, he puts um, a, a, a Star Trek musical that a fan has made um, with Data. Like, he's he's the guy, like, he pretends he's Data and Picard, and he does this whole monologue that's, this, or like a song that's made from Picard's speeches throughout the series. And it's the video's gotten, like, I don't know, over millions of views on on YouTube because people love silly Star Trek weird stuff like it's not that people hate it like there's there's a there's a love for that and people love that kind of stuff it's just how it's done in the setting that it's done and if you're paying respect and homage to whatever it is that you're doing that's when people respond to like genuine care and love whereas and if you're just throwing some shit together and seeing mm -hmm. being like well we did our musical episode like here you go people are going to not respond to that well, positively. Well, also, how can you do a Star Trek musical episode and not lampoon the uh, theme song of Enterprise while you're doing it? Sure. I mean, well, that's also, a good point. I mean, I right? love that song, but I get it because a well, lot also, of people hated it. I'm not watching. Time, I'm not really watching <laughs> yeah. a lot of Trek. I love that song, man. But, it, 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 at first, it was like, I hate this so much. Like, why did they do this? But it grew on me. So like at like at, at some point when it was starting, I was like, it's been a long time. Like, you know, you start singing it after a while. You get it's into a fact it. <laughs> that that yeah. Star Trek Enterprises ratings went up when Netflix added the skip button. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Odin, what were you going to say? Yeah, because I since I'm not watching the show, I don't really know the overall tone. But I was actually going to wonder, did a Silly musical nonsense. episode even make sense no. In, no. in this version? Because for me, when I think a musical episode, I think. They could have made that work in DS9. Like that oh, would have yeah. been mm -hmm. a like a feeling. The show's like a uh, general uh, you know feel would have I think led to that being a possibility. Where See, everything that I get mm. from this show seems a lot more super serious at times. Dude, or in DS9, it would have been like a containment link, link yeah. leak, or maybe yeah. quark quark tainted the the yes. booze the drinks or, or, or something. Q, Q yeah. comes yeah. in and wants or to mess Q, with Cisco, mm -hmm. you know? right? Or or the the wormhole weird aliens <laughs> yep. that weird religious thing. There could have been some way to do it. No, no, they're like, nah, subspace full. Good luck. I hate the fact that they're not considering what that means for the like. This is taking place before TOS. What does that mean for the rest of Star Trek if these things can pop up at any moment? Yeah, like they they specifically don't close this loop. They just well, sort of it, leave Brian, it open. Brian, it doesn't matter because it's in an alternate timeline. God. Okay. Yeah. I hate oh, that. Oh my God, see you next week, oh bro. <laughs> wait till you see next week. Oh. I hate when everybody says that. Like none of this matters. So, it's in an alternate. Nina, alternate it's all we have I, left. It's all I we have. It's that. true. They did. They altered the in, in episode three of this season. They they showed you that they altered the timeline. So yeah. I, we can effectively well, say it's not. It's not the same universe. You know what, Brian? The, like that's kind of like what my husband says too. I mean, he like I, I'm telling you, he's a massive fan. Like way more than I could ever even hope to be. He's watched star trek all his life but he stopped watching it and he says this isn't my star trek because it's not even in my universe like i'm right. not like this is this is an alternate timeline they can have it i'm just gonna mm -hmm. keep remembering my timeline and, and just until they find their way back to it um you know he's uh he's kind of checked out but he did watch star trek uh, picard season three as well because i was like okay we have to watch it apparently mm -hmm. everyone says it's good oh yeah he, we, we, we went out that one but he hated it because it was like he still was like, oh, my God, it's it's in yeah. the the JJ track universe. But he was also like, well, at least they tried to give the fans that final, you know, at least the characters were the together. same character. Yeah. It wasn't like all of a sudden the ship had uh, pronouns and was in love <laughs> with a transporter chief or whatever. You know, it wasn't weird like that. And you think I'm joking. Like that's an actual theme behind an episode of Star Trek Wait, Discovery what? where the ship has pronouns. I'm not joking. So it was like the sentient ship is having like, emotional problems and doesn't know how to identify itself. And you're, and you're sitting there like, what the fuck? This is watching? why I stopped watching Star Trek, guys. It's the like this is thing. the reason Brian just said because I'm like that's that's not my Star Trek. Like what the <laughs> are we talking about right now? All right, guys. So uh, 
let's uh, move over to some super chats before we start talking about Star Trek again. Uh, we got uh, <laughs> the Joker's voice for ten dollars. Can't stay long. Off to see uh, Sound of Freedom. Hail Nina! Thank you for improving the scenery. Uh, special yeah. thanks to Mixed Tees. Just got confirmation that the last fundraiser campaign uh, is the most successful. Hashtag Keep Talking. Nice. Yes. Thank you. Oh. Joker's voice made a T-shirt called "I'm Sorry, Nina." Bitches. <laughs> And um, I, I remember he sent the graphics. He goes, I'm putting this up on the on the website. I'm like, bro, this is not gonna. No one's gonna buy this. Uh, like women and don't want to wear. It just says bitches. Like it just. It, it's like it's, it? it's a t-shirt where his logo's on the front and on the back. It's like a couple characters, a Suicide Squad characters, and it says bitches. <laughs> not and a shirt like, that a lot of people would wear in public. I feel right. M- m- women don't want to wear. <laughs> I feel bad saying the word. Yeah. Women don't want to wear this shirt. He goes. No, no, people are gonna love this. So I put it up. I I couldn't actually spell the word out because like we, you know we would it would mess up a bunch of our stuff on the website. So I put like an asterisk in there, or whatever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he sold he sold plenty of them. <laughs> plenty of people <laughs> have Bang. no issue wearing that. T- that the, t- the next <laughs> the next fundraiser will be bitches leave. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I always I always get nervous with some t shirts. I'm not gonna lie. Like I have we have this one on our channel. It's called Klingons Live Matter, and it's just a take on 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 right, the black, black lives, lives matter, matter thing right. uh-huh. and uh, i was actually wearing it out in public a couple of weeks ago and we went to a restaurant that had a ton of you know black people in it and my wife got super nervous and i'm going what is your problem and and i looked down i'm like oh okay i see what's going on yeah i was but we didn't have any problems <laughs> i feel like that's didn't kind of problems that's yeah. that, that's enough to wear since it's like the Klingons, especially, I I don't right. think that they would really even understand. Like most yeah, people but, in public, it's like unless you're a Star Trek fan, right, you're not going to get it. Right. Yeah. So I yeah, I, I get it. We we also have a lot of T-shirts that deal with boobs, and nobody yeah. wants to wear yeah. those in public too. Yeah. <laughs> so, I do like uh, this one though. I do. I I don't wear this one in, in public as much. It's a duck fizzny. So it says <laughs> duck fizzny oh duck, and so but certain letters are highlighted and not so. It looks I, like, I see the letters that are highlighted, Odin, very yeah. well. Like that Crowder shirt, <laughs> socialism is for figs. Yeah, yeah. Speaking, yeah exactly. Speaking, speaking of highlighting, Mexican Iron Man for nine ninety nine. <laughs> Hail Mr. Kadish and the family uh, got it right. I am ready to fight with Nina. We have fighting. You want to we'll, we'll fight, a, Mike? No. You want to fight? I'll choke um, you. What are you fighting? I just want to f- just want to fight with everyone. Wow. No, it's fight. because it, this is an inside joke between Mexican Iron Man and I because. Oh. Uh, I a lot of Snyder bros got mad at me because I reacted to um, one of the like the Justice League when it was coming out. And I was like, I hated Ezra Miller. So I kept being like, every time I saw him, I'd be like, you want to fight? And like, er- <laughs> and like uh-huh. so all the Snyder bros got mad. And then Mexican Iron Man came to my rescue because he was a Snyder bro at the time. So oh, nice. It was all right. Fun. So um, Odin, I'm going to need your help translating this next super chat okay. from our top contributor. Scotty Dub for ninety nine ninety nine. Good lord, man. Good lord. So, uh, Odin, what's he saying in Spanish? So he's saying a hundred dollars today, uh, only in the honor of Senora Nina Infinity, oh. the great dame of all of us, the nerds. That's so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. And he says happy. And, he says, and now all. in English. <laughs> yeah, happy Saturday to all, and I'm always excited for another salty Saturday gathering. I owe owe you all a nice dinner out when I make it back out west to Vegas. Hey, look us up when you get into town, man. We will more than happy show you around, hang out, have a good time. So everyone, guess what? There is a new feature in StreamYards that actually picks up on memberships now. So Jeremy Turner just became a member. And member messages too. I'm so happy. I know, right? And there's been a lot of issues with that in the past. Yeah. And speaking of which, we got a member chat from the Astro Nerd Boy. Just when I think Star Trek couldn't get worse, it does. Yes. Never underestimate the ability for Star Trek to get even worse than it used to be. Mm -hmm. And finally, from Gavin Blackburn, who's actually giving us a super chat instead of a super sticker for a chain. Uh, What's going on there? Five pounds. The musical episode will get high viewership out of curiosity and the creators will draw the conclusion. (laughs) Of more musicals. Oh God. Yes, that's that definitely sounds like Hollywood uh, mentality, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. They have a hard time reading the room, don't they? <laughs> they really do. 
Hey guys, if you like this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and comment below on your favorite video as well. That goes a long way with helping us boost our channel and get out there in front of more people. And it lets uh, YouTube know that we're doing something right. And if you want to catch us live, we go live two times a week, once on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific time and on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. So join us there in the chat. We will see you on the live stream. Stay salty.